<laughs> so, so Lee, start out with um, just adjusting to West Virginia defense different. How do you, are you comfortable yet? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get more comfortable, you know, each and every day. You know, I'm trying to grow, uh, not make the same mistakes twice. It's really what I'm trying to focus on right now and um, just focusing on my fundamentals, you know, uh, trying to be in the right gap when I'm supposed to and taking the right steps, you know, so I can be in place. And But just in West Virginia, you know, it was a smooth transition, um, you know, coming from Mississippi. So it was kind of hot down there then. Coming up here is pretty cold, but I was in Syracuse for two years, so cold wasn't too crazy for me. So when I came here, you know, the guys were real welcoming. Like the team was real welcome, uh, welcome me in. Um, I made connection with a lot of the guys early on. You know, we competed through winter workouts, you know, relationships grew, you know. I feel like we're all getting pretty close now. So transition was smooth. The enthusiasm, I keep hearing that from everybody. Where, where does that come from? Um, I say my enthusiasm just comes from, from my love of the game. Um, you know, the game of football has done a lot for me, so in life. And, you know, I'm just, appreci I'm just appreciative of, you know, getting to play the game I love, you know, because, you know, like, it got taken away from me for a little bit. So, you know, like, just getting another chance to play, I just want to make the most of the opportunity, you know. It's um, fun to me every time I get to hit the field, and, you know, I'm just grateful. So, I just like to show that. When you were a youngster or something, somebody gave you and said, hey, this is the way you got to play? Um, or you just play that way? I mean, actually, I feel like I just play that way because, I mean, ever since Pop won the football, like I always, you know, I feel like it's just a competitive in me. Like, I don't like to lose, so, you know, it don't matter what it is. Like, we play rock, paper, scissors, you know, I'm going to want to win. So, that's just me competing. Saw you talking trash to a tire. <laughs> yeah, Coach Lake wasn't talking to the tire. You sure? Up, but I might have been talking to the guy who I was flipping. I mean, it was a tire race, so I'm pretty sure I was talking to the guy next to me trying to beat, you know, or talking to myself, like, let's go, you know. Just trying to motivate myself to flip the tire, but yeah. That's a mistake someone can make if they watch you, though, right? Yeah. Okay. You probably uh, thought I was talking to the tire if you watched me or something. You said two things that kind of interest me that the football's done a lot for you. Yes, sir. That it was taken away from you for a little bit. Yes, sir. Can you explain those? Um, you know, like, well, my sophomore year, um, I got suspended from the team at Syracuse, and therefore I ended up at East Mississippi Community College. So I didn't play, like, I didn't participate in spring ball last year. So um, football was taken away from me for a couple months. Um, went out, went down to Mississippi, got to play again. You know, wasn't sure was I going to get another D1 opportunity, and uh, I got one, so, you know. I just make – I'm just grateful. So, I like to make the most of it. And then you nearly came here before. You, you were signed up and ready to do all that stuff and then another curveball. Yeah. Take through that. that must have been kind of a topsy-turvy kind of time. Uh, yeah. You know, like, as a kid, you know, I always um, like West Virginia. You know, I used to watch Carl Joseph. He was one of my favorite players. So, when I had came up here, it was my first P5 offer I had received. So, you know, I was kind of overwhelmed and, you know, I wanted to come here. I, mean, I kind of made a decision to commit early on without, you know, really exploring my other options. And then I believe my senior year, well, going into my senior year, I believe there was a coaching staff change. So um, after the coaching staff change, that's when I decided to decommit from here. Different coaching staff, obviously. But yeah. Are you surprised, shocked that you ended up in a way back at West Virginia? Um, yeah, I, was de I mean, it was definitely um, surprising, you know. Because you never know what life has in store. So I definitely wasn't expecting it. But, you know, when um, Coach Leslie called me and the opportunity he told me I would have when I came here, I just couldn't turn it down. So, How much did that familiarity help? You know, which is – you already kind of knew this place you'd been yeah. before. Yeah, it, I mean, it helped, it, helped, it helped a lot. Um, the facilities had changed, you know, so I had to come down and see it. Like, they did a lot of new things since I had been here last time. And, of course, the coaching staff was new, so I wanted to come and meet the new coaches and things like that and get a good feel for them. But um, it's not too far from home. It's only five hours away from home, so I seen it as a good spot for me to be. What do you like about this defense? Uh, I just – it's intense, you know. Like, I like how the D-line plays, you know. Them guys up there, they make it easy for me, you know, because this ball is up there. You know, we just fly around, you know, and I like the energy the guys have been playing with um, these last couple practices, you know. So, once we get everything together, it's going to be pretty good. It seems like you're 
personality, downhill style kind of fits what you want to do. This yeah. works kind of to your personality a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always ready to shoot a gap and, you know, get a TFA. I mean, so, but, you know, I kind of like got to back out of that a little bit now, you know, and take start taking more key steps and things like that to be in position because, you know, you can't, you're not going to always get a TFA. Shoot the right gap. Yeah, definitely. Definitely got to shoot the right gap. Speaking of changes, you're here, and Josh is at Mike, and then he's not. And then your role kind of changes pretty quickly. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you knew that was coming or not, but like that's another thing you kind of had to adapt with because all of a sudden you're very important at that spot too. Yeah. That. I don't know. Could you prepare for something like that? Was it? Did it help you out, or did um, it not even bother you? I mean, I was already prepared to come in and compete. So I mean, I was I was gonna fight for the one spot regardless. Uh, who was here? You know, it wasn't wasn't nothing gonna change about my demeanor or how I approach practice. But you know, with with him leaving, it, it made me. You know, I feel like I had to step up. You know, a lot faster. Well, I mean, even even though we are in spring practice, like you know, the Mike usually seen as leader of the defense, got to give a lot of calls. So you know, I just I, I would say I hopped in my playbook more. You know, I was already in there, but I say I hopped in my playbook more. You know, to learn things faster. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Three schools in the last 12 months. Is, is, is that been difficult? I mean, just bouncing around and not getting settled until now? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's been a little difficult, you know, just changing locations, you know, because, you know, I make connections with guys. Then, you know, you have to leave. You know, you meet new people and things like that. But then again, like, it's also a good thing because I, mean, I, mean, I made a lot of relationships with people that I had met from um, the school. So, I mean, I'm getting to see a lot of things, you know, and getting to go places I ain't been before, so it's not too bad. Uh, talking about changes in your life, as an athlete, as a college student athlete, a lot has changed since you went to college. Just the, the idea of NIL and and transfer, go here, go there, et cetera. Uh, how, is, how has it changed? Is it, is it better to be a student athlete now? Is it uh, uh, the same? I mean, um, I mean, the, the only, I mean, I feel like it's definitely better because, you know, whenever, you know, we work hard as athletes. So whenever we had the opportunity to um, make, you know, make something, a profit from, you know, our names. So whenever we had the opportunity to make a profit from our name, it's always something we look forward to as athletes, you know. But then again, you know, it could also be a downside to it, you know, because people might lose focus or things like that, you know, because of NIL or let NIL distract them from their man, I mean, what they're trying to do. Do other students treat you guys the same or? Huh? Uh, do other students treat you guys the same or do you ever see other students anymore, I mean? Um, I mean, I'm new here, so I don't know too many people. Um, I see regular students when I go to class and things like that, but um, I feel like they treat us the same. I mean, I haven't been discriminated against, so. You know, what do you do best and what do you think you need to work on? Um thing I do best is I say like the best part of my game is probably my physicality. Like I like I see myself as a physical person. Like I I'm always trying to, you know, look for a big hit or things like that. And the thing I would say I need to work on probably the most right now is, you know, footwork, um my footwork and my flexibility are things I'm trying to improve right now. So Sir. Your highlights at Syracuse included a lot of blitzes. Did you do that a lot there? Do you still do that within this defense or not as much? What yeah, um, we still blitz. Like the blitz, well, our blitz package, like when, um, you know, when we kind of go to like a 3-3-5 look, it's kind of like what we ran at Cuse. Well, that's all we ran at Cuse was a 3-3-5. So, you know, it's a well, only three down lineman. It's a lot of stunts and they go, you know, with that, so yeah, when we kind of get into like the three, the three, the three, three stack look and run our blitzes out of that, it's similar. So, yeah. Pass coverage for you, has that been something you've had to pick up? Yeah, pass coverage. Um, it's something I had to pick up. Um, it's it's a little different. Um, from the three three from when I was playing in the three three five, man. But it's not it's not it's pretty simple though, you know, like because all the coverages, you know, kind of go along with each other, like, within certain lines and things like that, so. You mentioned Carl Joseph. Is that the reason you're wearing eight? Or is that uh, is there a different meaning with eight? Or um, 
I like Carl Joseph, so when eight was available, and I used to watch him as a kid, I'm like, oh, that'd be pretty cool. You know, I used to watch this guy play here. Like, I used to watch his highlights for a game. So when I had the opportunity to get eight, I'm like, hey, why not? You know. Um, that yeah. East Mississippi? Yes, I had some. That's, that's like so. famously brutal down there, right? Like, really yeah. Really hot. What was that training camp like? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty high in Mississippi. You know, we um all we did was run every day in Mississippi. So, in the summertime, every day, run, 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 run. So, I mean, it was pretty cool, you know. We had a pretty good team down there. So, guys competed, you know. People were trying to get out of there, you know, get back D1 to where they were trying to go. So, it was cool. Cold, yeah. which is which is better for you? Um, Syracuse is a different kind of cold. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would say. Um, I mean, I, I, I would say it doesn't matter to me, honestly. It doesn't. It doesn't really fade. But I like being hot, though, honestly. Yeah, because you know you could always put on some shorts. Who doesn't want to put on shorts and flip flops on time? You know, you it's going. You got to plan hot or cold weather anyway, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so I just adjust. get used to it all, sir. One is much older than the other, but how would you compare Buddy Stevens and Neil Brown as football coaches? Um, I mean, I don't, I really, I really don't know how I would compare them. I mean, they're both their own people. So, um, Coach Coach Stevens, he's more of a, you know, I, don't, I would say Coach Stevens yells a lot more than Coach Brown. You know, Coach Stevens, he's always up here. You know, no matter when, like you see him. So, <clears throat> and um, I feel like Coach Brown, he's a um, more laid back than Coach Stevens is. But you know, they're both their own people, so they both have their own styles of coaching. So, so that Coach Stevens' mentality is that what you want when you go down to that level. Um, I mean, I feel like Coach Stevens has to has to be that way because. Juco ball, like, you know, it's pretty tough. So, you know, you got some guys that come in there, you know, they might not want to buy into what you're doing or, you know, just a couple guys that don't want to, you know, just buy into the team culture. So I feel like Coach Steven has to be that way. But then again, you know, you 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 have uh, nothing but – I have nothing but respect for Coach Stevens, though, because, you know. Our basketball coach Bob Huggins says Juco guys ride in vans and eat cheese sandwiches. Did you do some of that in junior college? He said they do what? Riding vans and eat cheese sandwiches. Oh, yeah, we definitely ride in vans. And I'm pretty sure I had a couple cheese sandwiches, too. So, yeah, he's probably right about that. His message, obviously, is is that you got, you know, guys that come from JUCO have a chip on their shoulder, you know, don't take things for granted. Is that you, – you buy that mentality from junior college players? Yeah, definitely. I mean, because, I mean, being in JUCO, like, you know, we don't have a lot of the perks that, you know, Division One athletes get, you know, getting getting – being a D1 athlete, then going JUCO, it was a very uh, humbling experience for me, you know, because, you know, you're not getting stipends anymore and things like that. You're kind of, like, supporting yourself, like, you know, and things like that. Did you have a new appreciation for the game? Because, you know, you went from Syracuse to junior college, from having things to not having things and now having things again. Yes. Um. I mean, I feel like I, I appreciate the game a lot regardless, but um, it did make me appreciate the game more when – I had to go JUCO because, you know, it's just a grind in JUCO. You know, it's not – you're not getting any perks or no, any things like that. Like, it, JUCO just shows how bad you really want, you know, if you ask me. How about maybe appreciation for yourself for what you have to do to, to be a good player, do what you want to do in life? Yeah, definitely. Um, It definitely opened my eyes on a lot of things and made me realize, like, you know, that – it just made me realize that, you know, I just have to – buy in to what coaches tell me and just come show up every day, be consistent at what I do and things like that. Last question, Bob. I think you had one. You had, you're good. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate it.